The rest of our work in experiment two has to do with using conversion factors. So I'd like you to take a look at this picture here, which is taken from page 13 of the lab manual. And you'll notice what it's doing here is it's breaking down one inch from one ruler as being essentially equivalent to 2.54 centimeters. In fact, that's actually a defined distance. One inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. So we can change this into an equality where we have one inch is written as being equal to 2.54 centimeters. Now whenever we have an equality like this, we can change it into conversion factors, which allow you to convert one unit to another. And we do this by just dividing one side of the equation by the other side. So these are our possible conversion factors. One inch over 2.54 centimeters and 2.54 centimeters over one inch. So let's construct some conversion factors from just some common household products that we might find. So here is some uh, Benadryl gel that you would use, for example, with mosquito bites. And we see at the bottom that it contains four fluid ounces, which is the same as 118 milliliters. And so that gives us this equality right here. Four fluid ounces equals 118 milliliters. Now, if we want, we can go ahead and reduce this so that one of these numbers is a 1. So to make one of these numbers a 1, what we do is we simply divide both sides by the same number. So if we want to see how many milliliters are in a fluid ounce, we can divide both sides by 4. We said a fluid ounce. That means one fluid ounce. So we want to change this side to 1. And dividing both sides by 4, we'll do that. So dividing both sides by 4 gives one fluid ounce is equal to 29.5 milliliters. And from that, I can construct two new conversion factors. One fluid ounce over 29.5 milliliters, or 29.5 milliliters over one fluid ounce. Now technically, we could have used this original equation instead. It's the same ratio. 118 divided by 4 is the same thing as 29.5 divided by 1. It's just customary with our conversion factors to have one side be a 1. And then here is some dental floss. And we could do roughly the same thing here. We see that 100 yards is equal to 91.4 meters. They're pretty close in terms of size. Uh, and now if we want to see how many meters are in a yard, we can divide both sides by 100. And dividing both sides by 100 gives you 1 yard equals uh, 0.914 meters. And again, I can make two conversion factors from this. So I have a yard over 0.914 meters and 0.914 meters over a yard. So part C, uh, every, all the instructions you're going to need for that are on page 16. For part C1, you'll need this picture of the one liter graduated cylinder. And up to this line right here, this line is one liter, the very top line. But you'll notice there's an equivalent amount in milliliters. So 1,000 milliliters equivalent to one liter. You'll want to use that information to answer both, both of the uh, questions that you're asked on C.1. And then write your answers on the report sheet on the top of page 21 where you're asked for it. For part C2, I'm going to show you a video and that video will show me taking one quart of water and pouring that into the one liter graduated cylinder. Now the container I'm going to hold actually says four cups, but four cups is the same as one quart. So for step one from C2, you'll want to write down the experimental value uh, which is going to be the value you'll see after I'm done pouring the water. You'll see uh, how much water it fills in. So that will tell you how many milliliters are in a quart. And then you can find the true equality where it asks for that on page 13. Table 2.1 gives you the true value 
uh, as opposed to the experimental value which is what you see uh, from what I'm doing. Then step three, uh, you'll want to use the true equality to construct conversion factors just like I did on the previous slides. And then be sure to answer the question that you see right below step three with a complete sentence. Here is the quart of water. Remember, as I said, a quart is the same as four cups. Now I pour it in, and this is what it looks like after the water has been poured in. Be sure to record the volume to the correct number of decimal places. I'm now going to move on to part C3. And remember, you can always pause the video if need be. Uh, and for example, if that last uh, video, it was hard to read the volume on the water, just pause the video, scroll back and take a look and estimate as best as you can. So with part C3, you're going to use uh, your ruler to measure the vertical length of a page in inches than in centimeters. So vertical length, you know, up and down on the page. Now, it tells you to use the page in the lab manual, but you could really use any regular piece of paper. But you want the length to be very close to 11 uh, inches, which is what a standard piece of paper would have as its height. Follow the directions carefully that you see in step two in the instructions. Now I find that sometimes students have a hard time with the instructions on step two, so let me clarify what I want. Uh, where you see the yellow box here from the report sheet, it just gives you a line and then says centimeters over inches. What you want to put there is the division calculation that you use to find the experimental factor. So for example here, if it was 29.81 uh, as the centimeters and it was 11.25 as the inches if that's what you had uh, which would not technically be correct but if that's what you had uh, 29.81 and 11.25 there you would put this calculation right here uh, in the yellow box 29.81 divided by 11.25 so it's really just going to be your measurement in centimeters divided by your measurement in inches and then for that red box, you're just going to put the calculation. So I would put this into my calculator, and then whatever I get there is the value that we have. And you'll notice it already has the over one inch. Remember that division essentially is basically taking a uh, fraction, 29.81 over 11.25, and it just converts the denominator to one. That's always what you do when you carry out division. Now this was your experimental factor, uh, the one in the red box there. The true equality uh, you can find by looking again back at the table uh, 2.1. So the rest of this is the same as what you did on part C2. So find your conversion factors and then uh, answer the question with a complete sentence here. So part C4 asks you to look at this commercial product, which is uh, the Honeymade uh, Graham Crackers. It asks you for the name, so Honeymade uh, Graham Crackers. On the next line, you want to write down the weight in ounces, which is given down here. And don't forget the unit. And then you need to convert that to pounds using this equation. One pound is 16 ounces. So convert 14.4 ounces to pounds using the value in step three. And then as you saw in uh, part C.3, step four asks you to write the division calculation on the first line and then the result to the right. So in other words, this division calculation would go where that yellow box was and then the red box is the uh, result of that division. And then the rest is very similar to parts C2 and C3. If you have any difficulties doing this conversion uh, right here, then what I would recommend that you do is watch uh, the next part of this video, uh, which talks about how to make the conversions, and then go back and carry out the conversion as needed. 
So this is the last section of the experiment, and that is dealing with conversion factors. And this should have been discussed in great detail in the lecture section of the course by now. So this should mostly be review. So if we're converting a measurement from one unit to another, what we do is we simply multiply by a conversion factor. And the rule for that conversion factor is the unit that we want should be in the numerator and the unit that we currently have is in the denominator. So what will happen is when we're multiplying by this conversion factor the unit we have which is in the uh, numerator will cancel with the unit in the denominator and leave us with the unit we want in the numerator. So let's just take a look at an example to make that clear. So let's say I wanted to convert 2.2 quarts to milliliters. So here's my 2.2 quarts. Quartz is the unit I have, so I'm going to put that in the denominator, and then the unit that I want is milliliters, that goes in the numerator. Those numbers came from table 2.1. And now when I carry out this calculation, I have quartz divided by quartz, so those cancel, and I'm left with milliliters. And so the calculator gives me 2,081 milliliters. However, we need to take care of significant figures. This is all multiplication, so this has two significant figures here. Uh, this value is not exact, it has three significant figures, so two significant figures is the lesser amount, so we need to round this to two significant digits. So the 2 is the first one, and then the 0, so we look at next door, the 8 tells us we round this up. Do we round it to 21? No. We round it to 2100. 2100 milliliters. Remember that 2 needs to stay in the same decimal place. So it's in the thousands place, the 2 is still in the thousands place. So 2100 milliliter is our final answer. And then sometimes one conversion isn't enough. Sometimes we need to tack on additional conversion factors. So I want to change that last question uh, to convert 2.2 quarts to liters instead of to milliliters. So we've already done this part of the, equa of the problem. We've converted quarts to milliliters. Now I want to convert milliliters to liters and I know that 1,000 milliliters is a liter. So the milliliters I've got in the denominator, so they will cancel. One liter in the numerator. And quarts have canceled, milliliters have canceled. I'm left only with liters. And this will come out to 2.1 liters when we have our two significant digits. Uh, notice that these are exact numbers, that's why I didn't look at them for significant digits. Any kind of a metric to another metric is going to be exact. A thousand milliliters is exactly one liter. So for part D, uh, what you need to be able to do technically is to measure your height. Um, and if that's not possible, uh, just use the height that you last got at the doctor's office and estimate that to the nearest inch. So, for example, let's say that you're 5 foot 4 inches. We need to get this all to inches, so we know that 5 feet is 60 inches, right? Each foot has 12 inches, so that would be 12 times 5, which is 60 inches, plus 4 would be 64 inches. If you were 5 foot 10, you would be 60 plus 10, 70 inches. And if you were 4 foot 11, well, 4 feet would be 48, plus 11 uh, would give you 59 inches. So use the conversion factor from table 2.1 to convert that to centimeters, and then from centimeters into meters. Remember, there's 100 centimeters in a meter. Show the calculations where you're asked 
to do so. It very clearly indicates in the instructions that you have to do this. So underline that, highlight it, whatever you need to do to make sure that you remember to show your calculations. And then answer questions 1 to questions 4. Make sure that you've shown all the calculations completely, all the units, and that you've given your answers to the correct number of significant digits. Some of those answers will have a different number of significant digits than others, so pay very careful attention to that. And don't forget units and sig digs. In order to complete uh, one of these questions, you need to know that one quart is equal to two pints. So be sure to make a note of that. You can go ahead and pause the video and finish off part D. And I'm going to go ahead and continue on now with the last section. So when you are done, if you haven't finished all the pre-lab questions on page 17, be sure that you do that. Make sure that you go over the entire experiment and that you check that every measurement is to the correct decimal place following everything that we worked on in experiment one. Make sure that you have units for every measurement. So if a unit wasn't already written down on the line for you to fill in, you need to make sure that there is a unit supplied. Just like you did with experiment one, you're going to take pictures of only the report sheets and the prelabs. So that's page 17 through 22. Uh, but don't include page 18, which is a blank page. We don't need to see a blank page. And then those uh, pictures need to be combined into a single PDF file. Make sure that the pages are in order and that the pictures you've taken are flat, easy to read, preferably torn out of the book. And then submit that file to your instructor however they ask you to do so. Now I'm not going to continue to put a when you are done uh, on every experiment from here out. It's essentially going to be exactly the same procedures. So checking that the pre-lab questions are done, making sure you've had the units and the significant digits correct, because those are always big sources of error. Uh, for student reports, making sure that you've only given me the uh, pre-lab questions and the report sheet and you don't put any blank pages in and then just follow the rest of the procedure and you should be fine for the remaining experiments. And this is the end of the videos for experiment two. Thank you.